What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to today's Rad Formational video. So, this is happening well in advance of the entirety of the overhaul engine video getting put together, but this is some information that you guys need to know. We're going to talk about clearancing side seals. Okay, so we've got our rotor, got all the rotor parts, feeler gauges. You're going to want your book so you know what the uh, the specs are for clearancing the side seals, okay? Then you're gonna need some way to effectively cut them, okay? There's a little matchbox car thing that like pineapple racing or bonsai cells. There's all sorts of different ways, but the end of your side seal has to have a chamfer, or not really a chamfer, but a radius cut into it to effectively seal up against the uh the corner seal right since the corner seal is around so this as i'm walking away 12a rotor that we caught bit drill press you can do this other ways this is how we do it we slide the seal in here and you can clearance it to that end you could effectively do this with a whole rotor um but you won't be able to put this other side in so this is just an easier way now we have new Cryo treated side seals. These are repackaged by Atkins Rotary after they cryo treat them, but these are effectively new Mazda side seals. We've got springs, solid corner seals, which I'm not a big fan of, side seal springs, and apex seals. What we're going to do with this is start assembling the rotor. And before you start assembling the rotor, you need to make sure that you have a system for organizing what seal goes where. So I've noted on this rotor, this is the gear side. This is the balance of the rotor right here. And I'm going to clearance this. One, two, three. If you look at my tray over here, after I clearance this side seal, one to two, one to two. That's that side seal. Two to three, two to three. That side seal, etc. The back side is labeled four, five, six, four to five, five to six, six to four. Each one goes in the tray, so when I go to assemble the rotor to put it into the engine, they're in the right spot because the clearance matters. Okay, so you're gonna do that for your front rotor and for your rear rotor. So the rear one's down there, it's just some oil on it to keep the flash rust away. So we're gonna start. We'll look at the book. This is the rotary engine book of secrets, your criteria for overhauling a rotary engine. I've got some videos on this, I'll link the book. The PDF and I'll link the, uh, the video I did on this book in the description below. So this is the side seal section. Gap between the side seal and corner seal. Measuring tool required. Feel gauge tells you all you need to know. Right here, delta E, the change between the side seal and the corner seal. We're going to take our feeler gauge effectively and fit it right there between this side seal and this corner seal. The spec in inches, 0.002 to 0.006. So I have my 0.004 feeler gauge out. Should be, you can see that, maybe, kinda, there you go. And that's what we're gonna shoot for. Now, you can do them tighter, you can do them looser. Um, on a boosted engine, just like gapping rings on a piston engine, you wanna leave a little bit of space for all the extra heat, high boost, nitrous, everything's going to get hotter they're going to expand more on an na engine might not be as much you can set a tighter ring gap to have more compression okay. this is very important so i'm going to get all this out and start assembling the rotor and you want to make sure your corner seals go in the right spot too and everything because it's it's important that each one fits and these solid corner seals tend to fit a little looser in the rotor than an oem mazda corner seal that's why i prefer to not run them but Customer wants to send their engines, that's what we're putting in there. So I'm gonna get these out, start assembling them, and I'll show you the process. You wanna make sure that your springs all move freely and do not get hung up. If they get hung up, you need to clean these better. It's really not too great, they should be a perfect circle, so it's not too crazy that you get your apex seal groove lined up perfectly, but we'll just start getting close. We'll go ahead and put the side seal 
springs. Be very careful with these, you will lose them. They go, the little wing tip goes up. So more upward pressure, less chance of it getting stuck under the corner. Just gonna go ahead and put these in all the way around, and then we'll disassemble this rotor and organize, or this side of the rotor, and organize all the parts into our tray. So now that we have those springs in, start with your side seals. Now these won't, if you reuse these or are using used ones, you're gonna have marks on one side from where the spring has worn into it. You wanna always keep that side down so you get the smooth side up. So we're just gonna go ahead and start with the number one to two side seal. We'll see if it fits. Okay, and you can see right here off the right that it's too long. See, it won't fit in there all the way. So it means we've gotta take some off of this side and it's an iterative little process. We're gonna take this over to the drill press and I'm going to go ahead and chamfer both ends right off the start because these are going to be cut straight. Of the side seal are chamfered because they come straight cut. I'm going to try to fit this in here. And then after you've done both sides, you can start to just fit them based off of one side. Okay, so this is still too tight. It won't fit. So this won't fit down in there yet. So we gotta take more off of it. And this is a key time to just don't get too aggressive. It's your boy Johnny K. Thank you for watching Rap Potential. Stay tuned for the latest and greatest on Rotary News. So this is effectively zero tolerance. See how it pushes the side seal up and down when I push on the corner? Too tight. There's no side to side play. So now we get to tackle the daunting task of just getting that last bit so we can do our clearance and then we get to do this five, eleven more times. Alright, it's your boy Johnny K again. If you haven't hit that uh, like button yet, you know you want to go ahead and smash that button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, go ahead and hit that notification bell. You can see the feeler gauge. It's really hard to push a super thin feeler gauge. But you see here, slides in there. It really like won't fit in this side, right? But if we push on things, get everything springing up and down. Then we come back over here. We get a nice tight fit on this side as well. Sorry that you guys are shaking. But now that we've got this seal fitted, we want to leave it in, okay? And we're going to work on this seal because that could be pushing on, you know, this corner seal one way or the other, this corner seal one way or the other. We want to make sure that all of these fit with that tolerance between both got it because that total this total this is this tolerance number right 0 0.004 is the total movement for the side seal so you should only have 0 0.04 gap on one side and a zero gap on the other or you have a 0 0.002 on this side and a 0 0.002 on this side does that make sense now that we have this rotor done we're going to take these seals out and their associated springs and they're going to go in the tray so the number one corner seal goes in the number one slot. The number one dash two side seal goes in the one dash two slot. The number two corner seal is in the two slot. Two dash three, two dash three, number three. It's really cold. My hands don't like to grab this stuff. There we go. Number three goes in the three, one dash three, one dash three. Okay, now we get to get the springs out of here, put them in their associated places, flip this over, do the same thing again. And really, that didn't take that terribly long. And once you get back into the groove, the last two took went way faster than the first one. So, easy peasy. One, two, three, nine more to go. Four, five, six, ready to go. 
All right, guys, we switched locations. We're back at the Rad Ranch shop. We've got this rotor reassembled because I've clearanced all the side sills. So we came back here and I'm gonna talk you through the rest of the video. One thing to note before we get into the final steps, putting this thing together, we're putting the, assembling the rotor things to check. When you are using your clearancing device, okay, for me, the rotor and the drill press, you wanna build or figure out a rhythm for you. Okay, you as in the operator of the machine. When you start laying side seals in and they're too long, okay, refrain from just jamming the side seal in there and for some arbitrary amount of time and then come back and testing it. What you want to do, this is how I do it, is I grab my side seal and I do little, little like on, off, on, off. So I'll go, I'll put it against the grinding stone, I'll be like, Dun, dun. and each one of those is like a one two three pull off one two three pull off reason you do that once you start doing these you got one your second one your third one and you're hitting your tolerance numbers you're gonna kind of get a feel for right how much tolerance is eaten up right removed by that one two three so then like i know when i start right? Fresh new side seal. I might do the one, two, three thing five times and then go check it. And then once I get dialed into my, like I'm getting close, right? Then we'll be like one, two, three, go check it. One, two, three, go check it. Reason being, you always want to try to keep yourself consistent so you don't overshoot the number. Okay. Now back to what we're looking at right here. Once you have all of your side seals on one side of the road are done, you need to take your, your tolerance, your feeler gauge and you need to go through here and check each one of these again, okay? Keep in mind, just remember, that this number you're hitting is the total space that the side seal can wiggle back and forth between the two corner seals, all right? It doesn't mean that you want .004 of space on this side and this side. You want that number total. So in theory, it should only fit in, okay, on one side, and then when you go to the other side, it won't fit, okay? Because that side's just scooched all the way over. Once you have all three of them in there, you need to recheck that. Because as soon as you start adding these adjacent side seals, they are going to start putting pressure on these corner seals. And if you have the solid ones like these, they wiggle a little bit in here. And they're not the super tightest fitment, okay? So this side seal has to make up that fitment, right? Well, now that the corner seal can wiggle and the side seal can wiggle, just make sure that your tolerances, their tolerances aren't A, too loose, or B, they somehow get tight or get in a bind, okay? Or if you have one corner seal that's super jammed over and you can see it has a big gap on one side because this side seal is too long. So just be aware of that when you're putting these together. The final thing I'll say, okay, and we'll do a quick recap here in a second. Don't be intimidated by cutting side seals okay it's a little bit tedious don't be scared if you ruin one side seal it's not a big deal you can get another one and you can keep going all right it may set your put your engine back by like a couple weeks maybe order a couple spares if it's the first time you've ever done it or practice on the old ones right that you've taken out of your engine in most cases these side seals won't be super wore out when your engine loses compression, needs rebuilt, needs whatever. So most times you probably won't have to do this, but if you do have to clearance your side seals or you want to do new ones, like I said, don't be scared of it. It's not that hard. You can definitely do it. You don't have to have a fancy set of feeler gauges. These are literally Summit Racing Performance Tool, like 30 bucks. Uh, make sure that they do go to the tolerance you need. So I think the spec for the, like we showed at the beginning of the video, 0.002 to 0.006 inches, which is... Like 0.1 millimeters is the middle of that. So just make sure you have the spec you need. You can look at the, the rotary engine book of secrets book, which I'll show you my copy of it. I just literally printed off from, uh, from the internet, little red book. I'll link the video in the description to go over that book. But once you hit your numbers and you're good. Okay. I was shooting for the middle. Like I said, in the beginning of the video, 
if you're running big horsepower, if you're doing this, you're probably having somebody or you have experience building your engines to know what tolerance you need to run for the power level and the power adders you're running. But just be aware that this is a place where, you know, I've never seen a side seal break the rotor like a piston ring breaks the top of the piston. But you never know. You know, when these things get hot, they're going to expand. Um, and that's where you just want to make sure that you're not over or setting stuff too tight. Okay. So that's it on side seals. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. If you have any specific, super specific build related this, that, and the other questions and you want to for sure get a hold of me, like 100%, join the Patreon. Grab potential on Patreon. We have a great community over there. We do videos over there for anybody who has questions. So if you ask me a question, you don't get a, like I'll respond in your to your message that, hey, I'm going to make a video. And then I make a video to answer your question. Those videos stay only on the Patreon. They're very specific to whoever asked the question. Okay? So go check out the Patreon. It's super cool. With that, if you have any other questions or want to learn more about these rotary engines, go check out the slew of Radformational videos on the channel. There's a whole bunch of these videos out there. They're not titled Radformation, but there should be easy searchable titles for you to figure out. And if you find more stuff that you're interested in, Please subscribe. We'd love to have you guys around. We'd love to be able to teach you some more stuff. We do this stuff for you. So thank you guys very much for watching. We will see you guys in the next one. Keep it red. Letty. She was just in here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You got to say bye. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? You say bye? Sit. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You too. Peace, guys.